All right. So I wanted to start off our session this evening um, talking a bit about concentration practice and in particular um, what it's like to work with distractions that um, simply won't go away. Because I'd say oftentimes that's a lot of what comes up in concentration practice when we're doing that practice of bringing our attention to a single point of focus. Um, oftentimes it's certain recurring thoughts, feelings, stories, body sensations that will pull us away from our intended object or, or where we're trying to place our attention. And I think we all know this, even from just doing a day of practice, you know, um, think about what, what some of your kind of common distractions were, you know, where there are certain kind of um, relational things that came up that you had to deal with, where there's certain feelings that came up, certain story, I'm sure, you know, that the collective situation that we're in right now could, could serve as pretty, <laughs> a pretty regular, consistent distraction um, from, say, being with the breath. Um, you know, a pandemic is a good, good valid distraction. Um, anything that was, you know, something that, that kept recurring, kept coming up, kept drawing your attention away from that object, that is what I mean um, by, by a type of distraction that we, we can't just um, say no to. Um, earlier today, Emily gave some instructions on working with the breath, and a lot of uh, how we suggest working with distractions initially in concentration practice is just to say no. And you know, just be like, okay, there's this thought, there's a feeling, my attention, the attention is wandering over to there. And we notice that and just go, okay, no, not right now. I'm going to bring attention back. And that's a lot of what practice is with, with training attention and concentration. It's just coming back over and over and over again and trying not to do it in a way where we're berating ourselves or um, kind of cultivating self-aggression. You know, we're not, that's not the type of concentration we're aiming for because when we're beating ourselves up, it's actually hard to be relaxed and focused. It doesn't actually work. Um, and so that is a very good instruction, but it doesn't always work for us because they're, not all distractions are ones we can say no to. There are these special kinds of distractions, these recurring uh, experiences that really pull us away from our intended subject of focus. And with those, we found, Emily and I, that it makes a lot more sense, instead of saying no to the distractions, to say yes, um, which doesn't mean getting lost in them. Um, that's how we normally say yes to our distractions. We just give ourselves over to the distraction. We just lose ourselves in the distraction. Here, what we're saying is if you can't say no to it and it just keeps coming back again and again, then at that point it might be useful to say and said yes, but in an intentional yes. Like, yes, I am going to acknowledge this and work with this and, and um, use this distraction as the path. This is my path right now because it keeps knocking on my door. I'm going to let it in. And actually, um, in, in, in the case of the practice we're going to do together, we're going to let it in and we're going to let that distraction, however we're experiencing it, we're going to let it get as big as it wants. <clears throat> and we're going to let it stay in our experience for as long as it wants. So we're going to give it full permission to be taking up as much space and time as it needs to be present. So this is a kind of radical yes um, to the experience. This is to me what, what really profound mindfulness practice is about, is saying yes to everything. So here we're, we're, we're transitioning from the practice of exclusive concentration of bringing our attention to a single point that is, is sort of um, separate from other experiences or different, say like the experience of the breath. And we're opening instead up outside of that exclusive focus to include the distraction, 
the things that are pulling us away from being with the breath. We're, we're rolling them back into our practice. Like if you're, if you're a baker or you imagine kind of what it's like to bake and you're kind of rolling the dough and then there's this sort of, there's this thing that keeps distracting you from rolling out the dough. Well, one, one way is you just keep trying to get rid of it, push it away, throw it away, you know, move your, move your dough, your dough over to another spot. The other way is to just take it and roll it in and just start rolling it into the dough, you know, just make it part of what you're doing. <clears throat> and, and this is great because what I found is that the, the, the recurring patterns of experience that keep drawing us away from where we want to be, those are the ones that are in some sense calling our attention. They're asking us to pay attention. Because if you can just say no and it goes away, well, it wasn't really all that serious. <laughs> you know, it was, just, it was just a momentary, you know, blip on the screen of consciousness. But if it's something that keeps coming back, recurring over and over again, then, then maybe there's potentially there's something to, to that distraction. There's something that actually needs to be acknowledged. We could look at it that way which is a different way of looking at distraction. It's not distraction as a hindrance, but rather distraction as a teacher. Something that can, can, um, can reveal something to us about our experience, about ourselves. And, and in a way what this does, I think, is when we have two ways to work with distractions, we can just say no and come back to our object and deepen in our experience of say the breath or a visual object or a, a mantra or whatever the object is. That's, um, that's one, one way of practicing and it's great and it, and it strengthens concentration. But when we can't and we open up to the thing that's distracting us, we fold it back into the practice and we say yes, then, then we're practicing opening up our point, our, uh, the aperture of our attention. Um, if you think about a camera and the camera's aperture, it can be open or closed. Here, what we're working on, bringing attention to a single point. What, we, what you have to realize about concentration, what's taken me a long time to realize, is that that is the practice of concentration, bringing attention to a single point. But the point of our concentration, as concentration develops, has to grow. It has to expand. We have to be able to stabilize attention with a broader space of experience. And ultimately, what we're really looking for in, in these practices and concentration and mindfulness practice is we're looking to be able to rest openly, investigating and accessing all of our experience. All of our experience, the entire thing, the single point of attention that we're trying to um, bring uh, our attention to a single point is, is a point that includes everything in our experience. It's the point that includes all points. That's really what deep concentration and deep mindfulness looks like is when nothing can perturb us because everything is included. <laughs>